Hello. I don't quite know where I'm going with this, but I was uh, I thought I'd make a video just because of a single thought that occurred to me this afternoon and it was this. When I was a kid there were people who said the world was going was going to hell in a handbasket. And the people who said that were the old colonel types who wore a lot of tweed and possibly spoke smoked pipes. Uh, this was England after all. And they'd go, it's terrible. Whatever it was, it was terrible. The country's going to the dogs. And of course they were all like a hundred years old as far as I was concerned and they were much to be made fun of and you saw uh, they were often made fun of in 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 films at the time I think I remember uh, there's a, a Beatles film called Help and they there was a scene in it which recollected something that had actually happened to them and that was they would got onto a train and they were going to some um, they were going to a gig or something and there, there were the four of them and they got into a carriage and I think it's probably a first class carriage by that time they were by the time this incident happened they were reasonably well known and uh, occupying one of the seats in the carriage was uh, some old guy who was reading a newspaper and uh, when he saw these uh, these four rather unconventionally dressed young men he he said he, he questioned their right to be in the carriage whether they were just sort of you know sneaking into first class um, to, to which they had no right um, and it was there was a scene in the film Help in which the, uh, the, the four Beatles were in this carriage and they were staring at this old man who was becoming very uncomfortable and he did this sort of angered curdle look you know <laughs> type and um, and he uh, and he was telling he's saying something about them being out of place and the whole world being out of joint or or whatever well anyway uh, that was basically the way uh, most uh, yeah, young people felt in the 60s the late 60s I suppose the 70s uh, probably the early 80s as well that the world was changing it was changing for the better and uh, and they, they they were going to a better situation and all these reactionary old people who were complaining that the world was going to the dogs they had it completely wrong they were short-sighted and they couldn't see what was really happening and they were really just fit for the junk pile and it struck me this morning uh, hearing Douglas Murray uh, talking to uh, John Anderson in an interview which was actually recorded before the Covid hit but uh, Murray was always ahead of the game anyway and Murray was complaining uh, that the world was going to the dogs and he was using more or less the same language that you'd have got from these old colonel types you know marriage and christianity and 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 middle class values and, and all the rest of it and i was thinking you know this is odd when i was a kid it was the older people who were who were doing that now it's the younger people i i seem to be sort of in a in the middle of two waves you know just well the sort of this is quite not the right analogy because i was going to say I was sort of surfing between the two but of course you don't serve in the tr surf in the trench do you anyway it struck me as ironic and i did want to share that with you 
uh, and and the the other thing that uh, occurred to me was that the uh, the the revelation that the uh, three women who started Black Lives Matter I believe there are others now but the three basic the the kernel of the nut I'm talking about kernels a different sort of kernel here uh, were these three uh, women uh, female academics of some sort all black and um, they started Black Lives Matter but they did it for the sake of Marxism <coughs> and Black Lives Matter the organization not the sentiment is a, a Marxist um, has Marxist ambitions which includes uh, stuff like I think the uh, confiscation of all private property the uh, dismantlement of the family the nuclear family and um, uh, no no marriage I, I'm not quite sure now but I know that people have been complaining about those two first things oh and yeah of course not having a police force and, and that sort of thing but one of them was asked about this <coughs> and she said the following I know she was quite open about it it's not like they're being dishonest in, in that way yes of course we're Marxists and uh, I'm a trained Marxist she said now those of you who know my other videos will be aware that I have a sensitivity to words and I'm always looking at how words are being used by various people and that expression trained Marxist really really caught me by the collar okay let, let's just think what I, I, I was surprised that nobody seems to have remarked on that look if you've got a if you're like a, okay if you're a Christian or a Muslim or a, a Buddhist or, or a Jew and you say you are a committed or an Orthodox or a religious Buddhist Christian Jew Muslim you, you, you can say that but you don't say you're a trained Buddhist Christian or uh, or Jew do you trained is something else actually trained is what you do to soldiers now also trained doesn't have anything to do with belief or, or even commitment uh, when a soldier is in the thick of battle he well okay let, let's keep this more neutral than that assume there's a uh, a, a woman who had uh, training in karate and uh, she is attacked in a supermarket car park let's say she's attacked and about some man tries to grab her car keys or or, or attack her and steal a bag or, or whatever but she's had training in karate she will immediately go into a a kata a sequence the, you know when you're learning karate there is a sequence of moves that you uh, learn like dance moves and uh, depending on what move you start with all the rest sort of click into place one after the other after that so uh, this this man tries to uh, attack this woman and she goes into a kata without thinking because she's done it so many times it's muscle memory and uh, and and she overpowers the, the person who who was who was trying to uh, 
trying to uh, attack her. Now, did she do that out of belief? Was there any philosophy behind that? Was there any uh, soul in it? No, it was a series of instant actions to which she had been trained. That's what the word training is. You are trained to do something when, you know, and if, you've, if you flicked at my eyes, I'd flinch, uh, I'd close my eyes. That's an instinct. And training puts you into that, as near to that instant instinct as it's possible without it being an instinct. It makes you do a certain set of moves, actions or responses uh, in response to uh, a particular trigger. So when you say you're a trained Marxist, what you are saying is, I have been conditioned to act in a certain way in response to certain circumstances, certain words, certain situations. And I will act in that way, hardly thinking about it. That's what training is. And this woman didn't say I'm a committed Marxist, I believe in Marxism, or even I am a Marxist. She said she was a trained Marxist, which means one way or the other, she had either done it to herself or had an instructor who had given her a set of mindless reactions which would pop up straight away without any thought behind it. That strikes me as um, an indictment of Marxism. But even more, it's an indictment of all the people who didn't catch her up on that. I, I don't understand why people aren't making more of that word trained. Okay, well, yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Why don't you treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of promotional merchandising? The Granny Opteryx t-shirt or the Granbo mug, which comes in two flavours, with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. And whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.